Hello, this is Life Questions, a program that prides itself in looking deep and wide into the Word of God for answers, your answers to questions about life. I'm Bill Harris, your host. And we're excited to tell you that we have some answers for you from local ministers who are here to share their insights on the Word of God. So let's meet them at this time. First of all, we have Pastor Rich Reiki, who is a local Methodist minister here in town followed by Pastor Michael Wyckoff, pastor, <clears throat> pastor of Joy Harvest Fellowship, also here in Lima. Next, we have Apostle Ryan Binroth of the Well Apostolic Center here in Lima. Rounding off our panel is Pastor Janet Wynn of Cornerstone Church, also here in Lima. So Lima, Lima is capitalizing on everything today <laughs> on, on the minister's front. Let's begin by looking at um, this first question that a viewer sent in that I think is so well-rounded about what's happening in the world today. Uh, it says, what are some essential scriptures to lean on during times of mental anxiety and struggle? And there's, there's anxiety and struggle on so many different fronts in America today. What would you say, Pastor Wynn? Well, I love this scripture. It's Isaiah 26, three. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Mm. And uh, we're all looking for that peace, looking for uh, that, that sure foundation. And he, that scripture is telling us that if we will keep our minds on him, and whatever it is that we dwell on is what becomes magnified in our life. So if we dwell on the problem, the problem becomes big. But if we dwell on our God, our God becomes big and bigger than our problem. And there's just so many places in the scripture where he tells us do not fear. And he told us that because he knew that fear would come. Mm -hmm. And so fear is not wrong. He gave us emotions and fear always starts with a thought. Mm -hmm. So a thought comes to us, a thought that is usually a lie is what mm -hmm. comes to us. And then that goes into our emotions and then we feel fear. It's not feeling fear that's wrong. It's, it's res responding to that, res submitting to that wrongly. Mm -hmm. And um, so if we'll keep that focus on him and just remember that daily, yeah. um, that will be a big help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, scripture coming to mind for me of, uh, that the kingdom of heaven is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy yeah. Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, what are we going to submit ourselves to? It's like, if I'm not experiencing these things, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, then there's something in my life that is not submitted to the dominion, the lordship of God, because in his kingdom is all these things. So it's like, I asked the Lord, uh, what part of my heart is not submitted to the rule of your kingdom, to your lordship? And it's, you get that in alignment with him, and there's no place for fear. I mean, mm -hmm. perf perfect love casts yes, out fear also. Anxiety is fear. Yes. And like you said, it's based on a lie. Yes. And uh, just really saturating yourself in the love of God is an important part of that, too. The Bible also says that fear brings torment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, it's, it's not a nice thing to be next to, is it? Yeah, yeah I, I love what my brother and sister said. I, if anxiety, I think the definition is the fear of the unknown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And really, how much can we know? Uh, most people live under the illusion of control. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right? That, that, right. That we're in control and we take comfort basically in the yeah. lie yeah. that we're in control. But when we recognize that God's in control, right. it changes everything. Jesus tells us in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6, do not be anxious about your life, what you eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you'll put on for life is more than food and the body more than clothing. And he goes on to give us examples, but then he, he tells us in verse 32, for the Gentiles seek after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto mm -hmm. you as well. So seek the kingdom, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. God's rule, God's reign, God's authority, and his righteousness. What does that mean? That regardless of what's going on, there's a way for us to live yes. in the present circumstances. So we're praying for the will of God. We're praying for God's kingdom. But we're also saying there's a way that I'm supposed to live and respond in the midst of the unknown. Right. And, and as I live out God's ways and purposes in my life, 
there's a peace that comes, yes. mm -hmm. right? And God somehow provides yes. for our needs. It may not be everything that we want, but it certainly is everything that we need. Right. Mm -hmm. And that trusting in Him, because otherwise we're putting our trust in our job, our paycheck, our mm -hmm. possessions, mm -hmm. our whatever, but He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your trust in me. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, if, you know, a, a part of fear, you said anxiety and fear, like, I guess they're like first cousins. Anxiety speaks a lot to fear of tomorrow, right. what mm -hmm. tomorrow mm -hmm. will bring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you said earlier, you, you have no control. So you think no. you're under the illusion right. you have control, right. but who has control over tomorrow? I mean, it's, yeah. right. Why do we fear <laughs> well, about it, tomorrow? It's the very next verse in scripture. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for yes. tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient hmm. for today is its own trouble. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right? I've got enough to deal with today. I've right. got enough to deal with today. <laughs> right. But thank God that Jesus is Lord of yesterday, yeah. today, and tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Amen. Good. Amen. So. Well, I, my favorite scripture is uh, casting all of your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Amen. And if you look at the Amplified Bible, it says He cares actively for you. And of course, casting, what do you, you know, when you cast something, I don't know, I'm not going to do it, but you know, you, you throw something, you right. chuck it, you know, yeah. you heave it or whatever, you yeah. know, yeah. you're literally putting something into God's lap and, and don't take it back. Right. Yeah. And if you take it back, cast it again. Right. Okay. Exactly. But basically, now the challenge may still be there, the th threat may still be there, but you don't have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You That's see, good. he has it. So. You know, I've, um, I've been to the Garden of Gethsemane over there in Israel. Mm -hmm. And I love to go to, um, um, to the garden to pray. And I think about how trusting Jesus was mm -hmm. of his father to be able to give up his own will, right. yeah. knowing what he faced. And when I say knowing what he faced, it wasn't just the pain and the suffering that he would experience on the cross. The biggest thing I think he feared was being separated from his father because mm -hmm. he knew when he became sin that God would forsake him. Yeah. So. How do you, my God, isn't this something to get to the place where you're so trusting of God, you know what danger there may be out there, mm -hmm. but you're still putting your trust in Him mm -hmm. and yeah. relinquishing your own control right. over the situation? Yeah. You know, I, I think of my girls when they were little and thunderstorms, you know, hearing that loud crack of, of, of and, thunder and running into the room, you know, and wanting dad to hold them and, and Dad didn't control the thunder or the lightning, <laughs> but somehow they could fall asleep in dad's arms, right. mm -hmm. e even though the storm hadn't changed. Mm -hmm. Now we know God does control all of that, but I think the image is the same for us is, how do we run to him and just mm -hmm. somehow being in his presence is enough. Mm -hmm. it, it's enough to, mm -hmm. to calm the fears and the anxieties. Mm -hmm. yeah. As it was in, in the boat when there was a storm on, yeah. on, on the boat. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's another example. Absolutely. You know, it's another another aspect, and I just thought of this. You know, I I quoted First Peter five seven, cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. But the the verse prior to that says, uh, clothe yourself with humility. Mm. It talks about humility, and really to 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 cast your care on Him is an act of humility, mm -hmm. because really you are keeping your fear to yourself and well God can't help me you know because I'm in control or I want to control mm -hmm. and actually I, it's an act of humility I think that element of humility is important in fighting fear and also there is an enemy who wants to put fear on you because it is a form of faith yes. of what yes. you believe is going to happen mm -hmm. and the better we know him the easier it is to trust him yeah. it's so much easier to yeah. trust somebody you yeah. know and sure. the better you know him the easier it is yeah. to trust him Oh, you got to say something? Oh, okay. I can. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I think Philippians 4 is a really good passage to be uh, thinking about and gives you instructions on how to, you know, stay in peace. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, it says, don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, mm -hmm. present your requests to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ, Je Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any moral excellence, praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Just like Janet was saying, dwell. What you dwell on matters. Mm -hmm. So do what you've learned and received and heard from me, and the God of peace will be with you. So that peace, the God of peace crushes 
the enemy. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's good. Another question, this one from an atheist, by the way, who's questioning the Bible, says a kingdom divided against itself cannot prosper. Well, he's quoting the scripture, uh, which is in Mark 3, 24. God is not the author of confusion. That's another scripture, 1 Corinthians 14, 33. So you can see this atheist does know some things about the Bible, even though he's an atheist. So why is Christianity so fragmented and divided with different Bibles, dogmas, and churches? What sayest thou? Well, first of all, I think we have to remember what Orthodox Christianity, you can take Baptists, Presbyterians, you can take Pentecostals, um, you, you know, and, and, and really in many respects the Catholic Church. We all agree on the story of the gospel that God knew that we were caught in sin, hopelessly bound with a condition of sin, and therefore the sin actions occur. It's not the other way around, okay? And that their only solution was Jesus Christ. And that he sent Jesus Christ, he died on the cross, took our penalty so that we can have his reward you know, of salvation for mm -hmm. acting perfectly and being perfect and being sinless. And he actually took our sin and gave us his right standing, his mm -hmm. righteousness. So again, I think there is overwhelming agreement on the gospel. Now, there are different denominations. And, you know, a lot of people knock denominations. Oh, there's so many different denominations. Well, you know, really every church that believes in the gospel has a strength or has a revelation in certain areas. You know, maybe certain churches may have more in terms of the Holy Spirit, others in holiness, others in the fruit of the Spirit. And we all need each other because remember, the body is made up of different yes. parts, different strengths, different areas of knowledge. So I would, I would uh, uh, certainly there are, are minor points where we disagree, but when it comes to the reason why Jesus Christ came and the fact that he did come and that he did save us from our sin and it's up to us to accept that, I think there's some universal agreement. Yeah. As far as different Bibles, there's different translations, but they all say the same thing. Yeah. You I, know, so anyway. Yeah. I, I would add, don't, Take it. don't judge the creator based uh, on the... Yeah acts of the creation yeah, right yeah. <laughs> right i mean just just because we as humans mess up and and we're not necessarily following god or agreeing you know just because the children are fighting don't necessarily judge the parents <laughs> right and, 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 and so I, I would just say you know there's more points of agreement especially those who are genuinely seeking not to be right but to honor God. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I think one of the things that I see around the world as I travel is a growing sense of the unity of the body of Christ mm -hmm. and that we're not so hung up on our petty disagreements anymore or our denominationalism mm -hmm. or the lines that True. once separated us. But I think there's a growing sense among the Christian community that we need each other mm -hmm. and there's value to be had in the other traditions that may help us to understand aspects of the faith that we haven't seen in our, yep. in our upbringing, in our background. Mm -hmm. yep. I That's once good. heard, as a younger person, I once heard my bishop say, if Christians don't come together willingly, persecution will force us mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And sure. persecution and is. is coming. I mean, persecution mm -hmm. is in, in, in many spots around the world. Mm -hmm. It's just not here yet uh, manifested, but yeah. it's coming. It's coming, it's upon us. Yep. And that will force us together. Mm -hmm. We won't be looking in, in whose name we're baptizing in, whether you know you, you get baptized right. as a child or as an adult. Right. All those things won't matter anymore right. because when the enemy looks at one Christian in right. one faith, one Christian uh, in another uh, denomination that is, yep. we're all, he looks at us all the same. Yep. And then bang, they want us all. Well, right. and, and the salaciousness of the, you know, of the media or what we're gonna focus on is to focus on division. Yeah, you, right. you, you don't see, for the most part, uh, the news talking about the unity movement in line. You, you don't see them talking about right. pastors getting together on a regular basis to pray. You, do, you don't see them highlighting those things. You, you see them highlighting sure. the moments of division. Mm -hmm. And that's true not just in the church, but Correct. throughout you know, our, mm -hmm. our government yeah, and our everything. communities. So somehow, you know, it's the the ambulance chasing thing, you know, where the, fi where the fire is, that's where we need to be, as opposed to, 
you know, where God is moving. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's pause for a break right there. That's a good point. Good point. We'll take a break right now. We've got more goodies for you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. Harley, we are back, and uh, we wanted to finish up on and wrap that up about the conversation we had just prior to the break. Uh, a question dealing, uh, well, actually coming from an atheist, dealing with uh, what he perceives to be uh, the church being divided because we have uh, so many different Bibles, dogmas, and churches, and he's taking uh, actual scriptures uh, to justify his position on our division, his perceived division in the church as saying a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. How, how, can, how can this mm -hmm. thing called the church exist when it's so divided, supposedly? Right. I think uh, an important part of it is being able to, to go where God's going <laughs> instead of sometimes we want to camp out where we're comfortable and, and where we've, we've stayed for a while and then God's doing something new. Like mm -hmm. most every denomination started out of some of God doing something new mm -hmm. or refining in a certain area and not everybody wanted to go along with that. So it's like, oh, well, we got to do our own thing now. Mm -hmm. And so uh, moving with God and what he's doing in the time is essential. And then also I think a big part of it is because it's talking about unity in the faith. And I believe the church as a whole, especially the Western church, has rejected a big part of the, the headship of Jesus. And uh, in Ephesians 4, it says he gives himself, he gave himself some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry and to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of God's son. So unity in the faith requires all five of those mm -hmm. uh, positions and gifts of Jesus to be in operation. And generally speaking, in the Western church, it's okay to be a pastor or a teacher and maybe an evangelist, uh, but apostles and prophets is like, ooh, I don't know. But it's like we need all of those. Sure. That, the word for equipping the saints, there's the root behind that is actually and a, a adjusting of the bones, like there's a misalignment. Mm. And uh, so we need all, all of those positions align the body in different ways. And so when we're only receiving from one, or it's like, well, you got one church that's led by somebody that's more pastoral, you got another that's led by somebody that's more evangelistic, and one that's more prophetic, or, and it's like, what they do becomes the main thing when we really need all of it. Mm -hmm. We need all of those influences in all of our churches, and then we're going to look a whole lot more like Jesus in the process. Excellent. Are you talking about the fivefold ministry, yeah. basically? Right. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's go on to question number three that we had looked at earlier. When someone becomes a Christian, do they then need deliverance from demons or have all the... Uh, demons left already. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, well, I'm sorry, I, I'll jump right, in on that go, one pretty quick here. I don't mean to take the most of the time here right off, but I'll go let ahead. you guys talk. <laughs> but yes, absolutely. It's very possible. I mean, some people have an experience where they do experience a freedom when they give their life to Jesus and become born again. Um, but I've ministered to people in this area of deliverance for about a decade now, mm -hmm. and every single one of them was a Christian. And they, there's, we carry along some spirits that it's like whatever spirit you agree with, you empower to work in your life. And so uh, there's a very real aspect of people needing deliverance. It's a part of our sanctification. It's a part of our our. Uh, becoming more like Christ is be part of our becoming pure. And in Mark 7, the Syrophoenician woman came to Jesus and asked him to, to deliver his daughter from a demon. And he said, Jesus said, 
uh, it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. So the deliverance ministry is not for unbelievers. It's for believers. It's for children, the children of God. So Jesus is really clearly saying that. It's like you get in on the family of God first, which, you know, his ministry was to the Jews first. Right. Mm -hmm. And then after his death and resurrection, it went beyond that. It, so she was actually pulling something into her experience that was for a later time. And he's, he's like, you got enough faith for it? Yep, let's, <laughs> you're free, <laughs> you know. And I think it's important <clears throat> for people to understand that Jesus purchased salvation, spirit, soul, and body. Yeah. And that he said that we are to work out our salvation. So the Holy Spirit comes to dwell on the inside of us in our spirit. So our spirit is wholly <laughs> filled with the Holy Spirit, but we can still have in our soul, our mind, our will, mm -hmm. our emotions, and in our um, body, uh, spirits that are still present that need to be yeah. removed. And we can be oppressed by um, those spirits. And so therefore there is that need for deliverance. Yeah. But I think sometimes people get concerned are, if I've, if I've asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life, I said, I want to follow him. And now the Holy Spirit comes to indwell me. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Holy Spirit is dwelling on the inside mm -hmm. of your spirit. Yeah. There's not another spirit in there with the Holy Spirit. Right. Could be tormenting you in your body, in your soul, in your mind, in your emotions. And those things need to be cast mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. and right. dealt with. Yeah. So I think it's understanding how that actually works. That's a very yeah. good point. Good and point. and the, th the thing that also we have to understand for those of us have, who have seen The Exorcist, you know, with the head mm -hmm. twirling yeah. around mm -hmm. 360 in the green throw up and all that <laughs> yeah. stuff. We're not talking Doesn't about that. You know, there's, like there's, that. We're not talking about <laughs> demon possession. Right. Okay. Because again, an understanding spirit, soul, and body is so important mm -hmm. that the soul needs to be saved. We're not talking about the new birth here. We're talking about sanctification, yes. as Ryan so eloquently pointed out. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, again, and, and a lot of this is self-deliverance. I mean, you know, it's not me necessarily standing over you and says, come out in the name of Jesus. I mean, you know, you can resist the devil and he will flee from you. You resist the devil and you uh, basically do your deliverance. However, it's, it's the, the ministry is very valid and there are spirits that will try to influence your mind, trying to influence my mind, mm -hmm. trying, you know, uh, help, you know, coming into our body, you know, not into our body, but oppression external mm -hmm. as opposed mm -hmm. to possession internal, internal yeah. you see. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it could be very minor things. It could be, you know, jealousy and you know, a lot of things and not, you know, we're not looking for demons under every rock, mm -hmm. you know, and a, and, a, and a devil behind every tree, but they're there. And we have two extremes. We have, you know, th that one extreme. And then we have the other, oh, a, a Christian can't have a demon. Well, what does that mean? You know, no, it can be a mental spirit, soul and body and, and uh, a physical one. Jesus did deal with people in sicknesses by laying hands on them on the one hand, but then, then you see the same sickness enforced demonically. And sometimes, oh, I'm go sorry, ahead, go, go ahead. ahead. I, I, I feel like gonna, I should defer to my Pentecostal brothers and sisters here, but <laughs> I, I, we need the, the, the scripture that came to me was Matthew 12, uh, 43. When the unclean, unclean mm. spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through the waterless places seeking rest, but finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house to which I came and when it comes, it finds it, the house empty, swept and put order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more powerful than itself. Mm -hmm. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of the person is worse than the first. So also it will be with this evil generation. Mm -hmm. What comes to mind is it's the intention of the heart. So did I come to God to make my life better? Or did I come to God because I'm seeking the Lord? Mm -hmm. Right? Many people come to the Lord because they don't like the situation that they're in. Right. They they want deliverance because they're tired of being tormented, not because they want the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so they get relief, but they never give up the other gods in their life. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Usually in today's world, we're not bowing down to idols, but whether it's wealth, whether it's materialism, whether it's this new age spirituality, whatever it is. So you have to make sure that you don't have a double mind, mm -hmm. that if you're coming to the Lord, you're coming to the Lord and your hope is in him and in him alone. And that, you know, from a you know, from a more. I don't know, um, traditional mainline church perspective. It's the idea of, you know, 
Jesus talks about this evil generation because they weren't willing to wholeheartedly follow after him. Mm -hmm. And that was leaving the door open to mm -hmm. other things, whether go. that's sin in my life, other gods, other, other areas of influences that have more importance to me than the Lord. And so only when we have full surrender mm -hmm. does the Holy Spirit take over. And, and then we start eliminating those other spirits or those other influences from our lives. And I was going to say as well to that is often it's not so much what we would consider demons, although it can be, it's really our flesh and our flesh can't yeah. be cast mm -hmm. out. We have to die yeah. to our flesh. Yeah. It's that yeah. surrender. Yeah. It's, no, it's the devil. No, it's, it's not. You, it's, it is. We, yeah. we have to renew our minds. Right. Mm -hmm. We are That's the right. ones who have That's to right. renew our right. minds. So, right. so it, it, yeah. there can be but more often than not, it's really our flesh that needs to be good dealt point. with. And then when there are situations, then there's deliverance. Very so. good. All right, one more question, uh, running short on time. Sunday school and church activities are of no interest to my 12-year-old son nor his friends. I desperately want to get him involved in faith-based activities, but he fights me on this. What can I do to keep him connected to God? That's what this question is. We've got about two minutes on this what, what I would say quickly is what, what's the end goal? If the end goal is to make them uh, connected to the Lord, then the answer is don't shortchange your responsibility to disciple your child. Yes. So you are the chief discipler. We cannot abdicate this. It's like sending your kid to school and expecting the school system to educate them. There are people there trained, they're resourced, whatever, but ultimately as the parent, you're responsible for training up your child in the way that they should go. Mm -hmm. It's the same with church. We don't send them to Sunday school so that they get a relationship with the Lord. That's supposed to be supplemental to what you're doing. So I would say, check your heart. Make sure you're walking with the Lord. Make sure that you're growing and use every opportunity to disciple your child well, how you make decisions, the language that you use, how you conduct your life, and speak about and point to the fact that we're doing this because the Lord, this is how the Lord would want us to be. This is what the Lord would want us to do. And, and as you incorporate that into your lifestyle, I think my, my opinion is that children will always be drawn to the character of Jesus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the long haul. They may resist at first, but in the long haul, they're always going to be drawn to the character of yes. Jesus. So you have to make sure you're modeling the character of Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Amen. I have six kids, and uh, so as long as you're under my roof, now this is me, okay, but as long as you're on my roof, you're going to go to this church. You sound like me. And none of them, none of them necessarily at certain times throughout their childhood <laughs> wanted to right. go. Yeah. <laughs> but when they became 20 and 30 and 40 years old, Dad, I want to thank you yes. because I wouldn't be yeah. here yes. in my relationship with the Lord had, I, had you not forced me mm -hmm. right. to go. Yeah, we're going to have good. to leave it on that front. We're out of time. Very good. That's mm -hmm. very important, parents. Very important mm -hmm. to, to realize our responsibility in that. Yes. Well, thank you very much for your contribution yes. to this thank discussion you uh, yeah. today thank you. Thank and you. last week at the same time. We're very grateful to God. We just commit it all to you, Lord, and we ask that you will take a hold of these words and add them to your life that the Lord can draw closer and you can draw closer to him. So our program for today, we'll be back again next week at the same time. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. God bless you. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.